I bring grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I know that uh, as this day winds up, this service comes to an end, I'll be heading to the house after a short meeting, and, uh, and then it'll be time to start all over again tomorrow. And one of the things about the mornings in our home is, is it's usually my job to wake everyone up. That's a job I enjoy, honestly. I'm an early riser usually. Gretchen had to get up before me this morning, but I'm an early riser and I like to get them up and, uh, well, get the day started on a positive note. One of my motivations, another thing I enjoy doing in the morning is, is uh, well, preparing breakfast. I like to make breakfast, and I do it almost every morning once again, and, and it's just kind of my thing to do for the family, and, uh, and it kind of motivates, well, one of them anyways to get out of bed, right, Noah? Yeah, and I enjoy doing that, and then when things really aren't working, and it's still not happening, and well, then I, I revert to singing, and uh, I love to sing to get Noah out of bed, and I, I'll sing, rise and shine and give God the glory, glory, rise and shine and give God the glory, glory, rise and shine and give God the glory, glory, children of the Lord. And he, to that, usually rolls over and tries to sleep a little more. But despite all of that, um, I really enjoy it. And on occasion, on rare occasion, but nonetheless, there are those days when I go to my joy-filled task of waking everyone up and I am met with a scowl. Oh, my goodness. And, you know, when that happens, I realize that all my best efforts have just not paid off, right? And when you're met with that, you can see on the face that one is not ready to get out of bed. You know, perhaps you've had somebody in your life that maybe is a teacher or a parent, and when you show your face, they're like, oh, isn't it wonderful to see your bright, shiny face today? And they may be saying that because you actually are looking cheery and ready to go, and at other times they're simply trying to cheer you up and at least get a grin out of you. But the bottom line is that our faces express. They express so much, and yes, in the morning, but throughout the day as well. In the morning, it can be for a variety of reasons. Maybe we are looking uh, at the task that, that the day have before us and saying, I really don't want to do that. Or maybe we're looking at the day and we just realize that it might be mundane. We're doing the same thing over and over again. Or, or even, well, another situation could be we have to interact with somebody that we're not too crazy about interacting with. But our faces express it regardless of the circumstances. There's nothing that we can do about it. You remember that, I know you've heard that saying, grin and bear it, you know, come on, just grin and bear it. Well, that's one way of saying, you know, get over it or, you know, um, uh, maybe even being passive. You know, I know you got an issue, but grin and bear it. Um, and I'm not so sure that advice is always well, well grounded. I think, honestly, when we look to the Word of God, we find, well, what it means to be a child of God and to wear the face He would have us wear. I'll go to Noah once again because I teach him, and I've actually taught this to myself and have to remind myself on occasion about this, right? But whenever we have perhaps a, a bad face, a, a down look on the day, a grumpy attitude, I remind myself that nobody makes you mad, nobody makes you sad. You choose your attitude. You choose your attitude. And some people can be in the same situation, two people, and one will come out of it and they'll just feel like the weight of the world is on their shoulders, and another comes out of it and says, well, that didn't go too well. Guess we'll have to try it again tomorrow. We choose our attitudes. Our face tells how we feel about the things we're doing and what we're interacting with. In our Old Testament lesson for today, we saw Moses' face. And Moses' face expressed something that I only wish that we could do as literally as his face did in Scripture. But Moses was in the presence of God, and as God instructed him, he would come out and he'd be before 
the people, the Israelites, and, and they would see the glory of God in his face. What was read for you earlier, it said, when Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tablets of testimony in his hand as he came down from the mountain, Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone because he had been talking with God. Aaron and all of the people of Israel saw Moses, and behold, the skin of his face shone, and they were afraid to come near him. Now, you can read a lot into that, but no, Moses' face surely expressed something, and I believe clearly that the Word of God tells us they feared him because, well, you can't be in the presence of God and live, and yet Moses comes out, and God's glory is being revealed to them through his face. His face shone, and as the reading goes on, it expresses how Moses would cover his face with a veil, almost to bring peace to the people, but then when he would come to talk to them, he would open it up and then close it again. But his face did display this much, that he had been in the presence of the Lord, and God's glory shone in his face. Wouldn't it be cool if our faces displayed God's glory? I mean, seriously. We could come out of worship and feel um, just so uplifted, know that we've received absolution, our sins are forgiven, perhaps we've received communion, you've heard the word preached and you're saying, yes, I'm ready to go, and you go out into the world and people could see literally your face shining. That'd be awesome. And then we'd have to explain to them why. Because my God of grace has been at work in my life and given me strength for this week, this day, and uh, strength for this life to lead me to life everlasting. That would be an awesome thing, and that would be ideal. But the fact is that our faces often reveal something else. They reveal the sin that works in our lives. They reflect the sinfulness that comes about regardless, as I said, through this season of Lent, and we reflect on these many things that we face in life and I know like this past Sunday we talked about facing conflict and the conflict that resides within us. But at times, too, that conflict is with others. And let's be honest with ourselves. Sometimes we're just too bullheaded to be open to reconciliation. We're not open to reconciling because we feel like we need to be right rather than just saying what is right is God's people being in full accord with one another doesn't mean that we acknowledge somebody else's sin as okay, but it does mean that we walk with them through that sin, perhaps, and help them to see the forgiveness that God has for them as well. But as it frequently is, our faces say, go away, get away, turn around, I don't want to be in your presence. And our faces do not always reflect the glory of God. But the good news is this, is that God has given us the ability, and honestly through forgiveness, the, the ability to turn face really quick. To go from a moment where we are totally stone-faced against something and realizing that we've erred and we ask for forgiveness from God and perhaps individuals that we're interacting with and we let God's glory shine. God's glory shines. As a matter of fact, I remember discussing this in a Bible class back in St. Louis. You know, it's kind of an odd saying for me to think about how we glorify God. I can't glorify God when God is glory. And we stepped through this whole conversation, and I finally came to real, realize that we glorify God no, in no better way than when we get on our knees and we repent. That's what brings glory to God. It's not the things that we do, the service that we do. We glorify God most of all when we get on our knees and say, Lord, please forgive me. That's when God is most glorified because Jesus was glorified on the cross when he died for our sins. And that's where God's glory is revealed first and foremost. But then we carry that glory into the world and we have the privilege of wearing that on our faces our God wants to reconcile us with himself he wants us to face one another in this life and and be once again in full accord just walking together and enjoying life together as his family enjoying life together as we 
walk together through good times and, and hard times as well. We saw that on the cross as well, even Jesus in his dying moments as he looked at his dear beloved friend John and said, see this, this is your mother. And he looked at his very mother and said, this is your son. And John, well, John took her home, took her home as his family. And they walked, they faced one another in one of the hardest times they could have ever experienced to watch their dear friend, their dear son, die on the cross. And at that, Jesus knew that his role in this earthly life was complete. And that's when he knew it was finished. And he began then to give up his life for us, for you and for me. Jesus wishes the same for our relationships and our lives as well. The life in Christendom is not always perfect. You and I both know it. As a matter of fact, we say it almost cliche. It's a church, a shrine for saints, or a hospital for sinners. And it is the latter. It is a hospital for sinners, and yet we walk in accord with one another. We help each other through good times and bad. We're in the Word of God together seeking His instruction for our life. And we do so. We do so. And once again, through good times and bad, one of my favorite lines in wedding liturgy, I do this wedding liturgy that I adopted from a pastor that was a mentor of mine, and uh, there's a part of the liturgy where you literally, it's after the declaration of intent where the couple uh, make their, their intent towards one another, and then I look at the parents and I have the parents stand up and promise to uphold the couple in their prayers and in their support, and then I ask the congregation to do the same thing. What I say to the congregation is, do you promise then to uphold this couple in their hardships so that in these tough times their troubles may be divided? And do you promise to celebrate them in their times of joy so that these celebrations may be doubled? And then I say, if so, say we will with the help of God. And obviously they respond accordingly. That's the walk of faith that we have the privilege of walking together as we face one another through this life in Christ, sharing with each other in those good times and in those bad. At the same time, Jesus on the cross said these words, Father, forgive them. And we need to learn to forgive one another too. Why? Because, well, God has forgiven us. We pray it in the Lord's Prayer, do we not? Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and that's easier said than done but when we do do it we literally do have faces full of the glory of God God's glory is truly revealed when we well when we walk a life in accord with his will for for you and for me you know, have you ever, on Ash Wednesday, you know, and I'm not going to ask people to hold their hands up, but when you receive the sign of the cross on your forehead, I know some people leave and they'll keep that on all day. Sometimes it gets kind of smudged off regardless of what you try to do. And then others, I mean, they'll wipe it off. And, you know, I did, I did it, but I'm a little shy about expressing that in my world. But have you ever been and you've walked around with that cross on your head on Ash Wednesday and seeing the way people look at you. It's kind of interesting, isn't it? And I know for me, like this past Ash Wednesday, I went out to lunch after, uh, a, well, kind of a late lunch after the midday service, and it was really neat to be in a restaurant and see people with crosses on their heads from other churches. And I was like, yeah, there's more people out here sharing Christ. They're wearing the glory of God on their face. Wouldn't it be neat if it was once again that easy to go out every day with a cross on our forehead and people see that we walk in faith? Yet God's given us perhaps a different way of doing that in our lives. Wear the glory of God in our face. Let our faces shine to others simply, well, through shared kind words. Through, well, hearts that literally are willing to serve others. Giving people a second chance when they ask for forgiveness. Being a calming and comforting presence in the midst of crisis. God has given us many ways, many ways in our lives to share our gifts with the world, and to allow our faces to, well, proclaim His glory. One of the things we can do as well is recognize how each person, Christian or non-Christian, is a unique creation by God 
And you never know how God is going to use you to touch their lives so that they either grow in Christ or come to know Christ as well. Value them for the contribution that God has made them to be and recognize that he may use you to reveal his glory to that person. So now, now it's time to face one another and celebrate that God has put us together in this time and in this place to be in service to the glory of his kingdom. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.